Hi folks, I have spoken in the past um, quite a bit about spears and um, one spear, if I just grab it here, I put it out of the way because as you'll see in a minute it is big. Here we go, this is a Sudanese dervish probably brought back to Britain in the uh, late 19th century or beginning of the 20th century. This is a very big spear as you can see. Now very clearly with this type of spear blade you can cut, you can chop or you could slash, push cut or draw cut. I'll just put the spear away. Um, and a lot of people when they watch sparring videos um, where we use spears in my club say, oh you know, you know why aren't you counting um, push cuts or chops or this kind of stuff, why are you only thrusting? Well, there's two main reasons. One is that actually an artifice of training, okay? So something that comes very natural to long sworders, and that is what m most people in my club do, longsword and sabre or longsword or sabre okay so what comes most naturally to them when you give them a weapon that they hold in two hands it's try and use it like a giant longsword now to an extent if you're thrusting with it that's fine but what you've got to remember with a spear is to not start trying to chop people with it because it's not going to work okay number one most of it is a wooden pole so all you're going to do is you're going to hit them with a wooden pole which frankly most people can shrug off and then stab you um, it's not even a very stout wooden pole. Um, but secondly, if you are going to cut them with a cutting spearhead, like that big dervish one I just showed, you cut with the very end. You've only got that much blade at the end to cut with, completely different to a sword. Okay, so you need, if you are going to chop with it, you need to chop in a completely different way. So, so one reason why we don't chop with the spear is to get people out of the habit of trying to chop with the spear. The second reason is because the type of spear that we're simulating, a six foot long, what was known as the um, short spear in, in the 14th, 15th century, is essentially a short spear for fighting against people in armour. That doesn't mean that you have to have armour to use it, although that was usually the case. It would also be a fairly good weapon at going against someone in armour as well. It is more rigid than a sword, so better for half sorting because you don't half sort you're essentially half sorting with it all the time but it's more rigid than a sword and of course it's more secure and easier to hold and longer than a sword um, so it is a good weapon for opposing someone in armor has a very thick stiff point but this is the important part the point on it is not a point that you can really chop or slash with and here I have one okay so I've just received this this actually needs sharpening up but if you can see the cross section and hold it towards the camera. It is really, really thick. This is essentially uh, a cross. Okay, so we've got a mid rib going up here, and then of course the edges. Now, the edges absolutely they can be edged, but the edges are really to assist in penetration. Okay, they're there to um, essentially scissor the, the mail or uh, cut the gamberson as it goes in and to assist that point going in. This is not something that is going to chop. Yes, you could hit someone with it, but it's not, it's not really going to chop into them because it's the wrong shape. If you can see, it's got this massive midrib, so the blade goes like this, yeah, towards the center. You might, if you ha hit someone, if you took your spear offline, which of course is a bad thing to do, if you take your spear offline, brought all the way back and went BAM on someone's head, Yes, it would really, really hurt them. However, most of the damage it would do is actually from the percussive effect of hitting them with what essentially is like a little mace on the end of a long stick, okay? You're hitting them with leverage and with force. It's not going to chop through them. It's not that type of blade. This is absolutely a rigid, armour-piercing, reinforced point for jamming into mail and gambeson and gaps in plate armour to stab someone, okay? So these are the spears that we're predominantly simulating when we're using medieval weapons, because this was pretty much the most common type of spearhead in the late medieval period, in the period when we're studying sword and buckler or longsword or poleaxe or whatever, or spear indeed. Um, this is the type of essentially anti-armour spear, and they can't really slash or chop with it effectively. What you can slash or chop with is an earlier type of spear, and this is another one of Paul Benz's works, and this is again tr all completely traditionally forged with carbon carbon steel edge on a um, lower carbon body, um, forge welded, and um, this type of blade, absolutely you could slash, you could draw cut, um, a push cut, and to some degree chop with it. It is a bit like a mini glaive or a mini partisan. However, I would say that these spears were predominantly used 
with and against shields. Um, now, if you're using, and therefore if you're using a shield, you've got the spear in one hand. If you've got the spear in one hand, it's not very easy to give any kind of chop. It doesn't matter whether you're holding it uh, a point up or point down. It's not very easy to give any kind of chop when a stab wouldn't be more effective. One situation where you could do it is if you're stabbing at someone and they block with their shield. If you follow the um, shield around, it's possible you can do a draw cut to the side of their knee, their hamstring, this kind of area. Um, so I'm not saying that cuts aren't something you could do. Absolutely, you could do push cuts and pull cuts with this type of spear, and they did have fairly long edges. And something else I should mention is in in the so-called Dark Ages, so in the let's say the Viking era, but indeed earlier in the Migration era as well, you do get what are known as sword-bladed spears. Um, that is with long, uh, sometimes known as a hewing spear, perhaps mentioned in the Icelandic sagas. Um, you do get fairly long blades, you get winged spears, um, and so you do get various types of spear that are even more sort of suited to chopping or slicing than this type of blade is. Um, so I think definitely spears were used for cutting and chopping in some situations, particularly when you're holding a spear in two hands, because then you've got the leverage to be able to do it. If you're using a spear in one hand, not so much. Maybe a push cut or a draw cut if you miss your thrust, or if you uh, thrust and see that on the way back you can do a draw cut with the edge. Maybe in these situations. Um, but yes, the main point is that when we're representing the short, late medieval spear, it has a great big fat armour piercing point on it that is not going to chop or really even to push, cut or slash because the edges are too thick on it. Okay, They're going to be meeting at almost 90 degrees and they're really there to assist the thrust. Cheers guys!